Hello, Scriptonauts! Welcome to Chapter 2. I hope you're enjoying your time here at Radix Academy. You've gotten a little taste for what Scripto is and what it might be used for. So now it's time for the fun part. It's about time to dig in and get our tools set up. We need to set up a local development environment so we can start writing some code. A typical write a passage in any programming language, getting all your dependencies and your tools set up and ready to run on your local computer. Now, of course, if you run any, any issues, jump on over to Discord. There is, of course, Radix employees there can help, as well as a very welcoming community. Now, don't be shy. Don't think that uh, just because you're setting up, having a question, trust me, everyone has run into issues setting up a development environment before. You're not alone. Don't be shy, reach out, ask for help. It can be a very daunting process. It's the first thing you do, so of course, that's where you're gonna have the most questions. So, with that handled and out of the way, let's dive right in and start installing some tools. All right, so first on the list, we need to get ourselves an IDE. IDE simply stands for an Integrated Development Environment. So what this is, is essentially a basic text editor that we can edit our code with, with a few special extensions added that will give us handy syntax highlighting, um, kind of some special types of autocomplete that know the ins and outs of the programming language we're working with, which of course in our case is Scripto and Rust, because Scripto is a, a framework built on top of the Rust programming language. So the recommended IDE that we are going to install is going to be Visual Studio Code. Not to be confused with Visual Studio, the two are very different IDEs. So we want to make sure we get Visual Studio Code. There's a link in the information below this lesson to take you straight to that. And so let's go ahead and walk through the process and get that installed as step one. All right, so as you can see here, I've got the download page pulled up. This is the URL right here. We are going to download Visual Studio Code. In my case, in this video, it's going to be the Mac version. So simply click the button here get started you should get a dialog that pops up and asks you where you would like to save it i'm personally just going to drop this one on the desktop for now so save that okay so after that finishes downloading you know, open up the zip file you should get a zip something like this and of course if you double click on it you will get the visual studio icon now, I like to drop it down in my dock here so it's there for easy access. Uh, we'll just put it right there. And then let's go ahead and get Visual Studio opened up and we are going to install some extensions. So, uh, yes, I do want to open it. That's why I downloaded it. Now, you can pick your color scheme. I like it dark. So. Of course, it's going to give us some options. We can make that full screen. And next. So it's going to tell us a little bit about things. Really, I just want to go next, next. Let's go through all this. Yes, and done. Okay. So now that we're here, you get this welcome screen all the time. Um, first thing we want to do is get some additional extensions installed all right so we're going to come up here and look for rust analyzer so I'll start typing rust and there you go now make sure you get the second one here rust analyzer we want to get this installed this is what's going to give us syntax highlighting and quite a few features actually to do with the rust programming language quite simple just click install now, the next one we want is the transaction manifest. 
there we go. Radix, I suppose we could start searching for Radix. Let's try that. So Radix, yeah. All right, so if you start searching for Radix, you'll see this Radix transaction manifest support. We want to install this as well. Okay, so that gets us set up there. That is the basics of our IDE. That's really all we need to do in this particular portion at the moment. The next step, which is going to be for us to install Rust. Now, of course, these instructions are all in the text portion of this lesson below, as well as if you need to refer to them later on the main scripto documentation page. If you come here to the docs at this link, then these same instructions are right here. Now we are on Mac OS. So of course, find your corresponding operating system. If you're on Windows, there's this particular set of instructions here as well. Um, for us today, it's going to be Mac OS. So we're gonna test these things out right here. Uh, and of course, these same instructions are in the text below. So first up, let's make sure we have Xcode select and install that. So let's just do this here. So we don't have to type all this out. Maybe this will be a little easier. Let's open up a terminal here. Increase the font size so we can see a little better. And make everything fit. Okay. So first step, Xcode select dash dash install. Now, if you want to check and see what you have already, you could, of course, type Xcode select dash V, and that'll show a version. Now, of course, I have something here, but I still want to run this install command anyways, make sure we have everything we're after. Yes and agree. All right. So this may take a minute. You might need to pause and hopefully it doesn't really take 99 hours there, Apple. We'll hope we can do that a little faster. Um, but while you're waiting, you might need to pause the video, let things install, and then we will make our way to the next step. Okay, so now that that finished installing, we can go ahead and move on to the next step. Let's make sure we've got CMake. So brew install CMake, huh? Of course, if you're on this one, you can click this handy little copied and command V or control V if you're on Windows to paste. So brew install CMake. Now this is definitely a Mac specific command because it's using homebrew to install. And I do not have homebrew yet. Okay, so if you're on a brand new computer, you may have this also to be the case. Uh, if you've been using Mac for a while, chances are you probably already have homebrew. But what we can do is let's go find homebrew. Homebrew. All right, brew.sh. And what we want to do, install homebrew. Let's go ahead and grab that command right there. And I'm going to paste that in. Plug in my password. And OK. So homebrew installing. Now, CMake is an important dependency you will find that the Rust Analyzer plugin uses it. So it is one we want to make sure we get set up properly. So once again, this may take a little while to install. Uh, homebrew itself, certainly not a direct necessity, uh, but it is very convenient. So no harm, no foul in getting that set up. You will use it many times as a developer on a Mac. 
So with that, I suppose we'll pause one more time here, let this finish, and then we'll come back and try CMake yet again. All right, almost done with homebrew here. So let's see, we get a warning that it's not in our path. All right, so instructions can be found in the next steps below. So let's run down here. Run these three commands in your terminal to add homebrew to your path. Personally, I recommend let's do this. All right, let's run this command here to set our path up. Let's run this one here. And oh, let's run this one here. Okay, now that should get us set for homebrew. We can clear this up, give us a little space to read, and let's go back and try that again. We just want CMake. So. Command V, brew install CMake. Okay, now we're cooking. All right, so we're gonna install CMake here, and then in the next step, we are going to finally install Rust. So let's do this. All right, I'm gonna jump down here. This one's kind of a long one. Let's stretch this a little bit back. So hopefully we can see it all. Bring this up. We're gonna grab this command right here. Okay, so I'm just gonna copy it like that. Come in here, Command V, and this is going to install Rust for us. So we get a couple options here. It's talking about Cargo. Cargo is a package manager, as you can see up here. It's gonna come down here, Installation Options. We want to proceed with installation so we'll give it a one and let it roll all right so once again the fun of setting up your development environment is watching things load not much you can do but just go ahead and let it run all right that wasn't too bad i rambled just long enough that we are done so that's the end of our instructions for mac os Oh, we need to restart a current shell. Yeah, that would make sense. This would reload your path variable. Okay, so let's do that. Let's kill this. Open a new terminal. Make it big enough to read. Let's pull up the Rust documentation and see what we can type. Rust lang. Install. All right, we ran that. Let's try that rust up. Okay, now we got something. Here we go. Look at that. There is a rust tool chain. Okay, where did we do that? Uh, so yeah, it's rust up, not rust. Rust up, one, two, five, one. We've got our tool chain. We've got some information. So of course we can ask for help. We can see other commands that are available to run. So that means we're done with that. We have installed our tool chain, but we have one last step to do. Now we need to set our compiler target. So let's go back to these docs here, curl. All right, so on Mac OS, that's step one. Step two, we need to go ahead and do this. So that's what it was talking about, enabling cargo in the path. Let's go ahead and do that too. Let's just come up here. All right, so once again, we're still on install this crypto tool chain on the docs here. We are going to enable cargo in the current window. All right, so by running this command right here. All right, so let's do that. Simple enough, done and done. All right, and then here, is our compiler target. 
All right, we need to set this as well. So copy that and run it. All right, here we go. It's setting some things up and we're done. All right, so there you have it. You now have set up your development environment. In the next video, we will pick up with Visual Studio Code and we'll go clone the repository, get our simulator installed so that we can interact with our local Radix ledger and play around and get our first taste of what it's like to set up an account and just kind of get a little deeper into how everything's working. So great job, you're all set. In the next video, we're gonna learn a little bit about Git and install the simulator.